Video recording for EduQuest is provided by WhatBurner. Take Skype video to the next level. Record, edit, upload at vodburner.com. Hello everybody and welcome to EduQuest episode 50. I'm Kirsten Winkler and together we are on the search for better education. For this very special episode I'm happy to have a very special guest as well, Shai Revchev of the University of the People. Shai, welcome to EduQuest. Thank you and thank you for inviting me. So maybe before um, we get into detail talking about um, the University of the People itself, um, as EduQuest um, always likes to portray the person behind the startup or behind the company, let's get back in your career a little bit um, and maybe um, to, to put it in a nutshell, as you are for more than 20 years in education, is there something like a guiding uh, theme, a topic, or a vision you follow? Uh, I think that, that the major thing in education is to help people to improve their lives. That's so. That's the first thing that uh, that. Uh, education can help people with and that's the first thing that um, people who get education are striving for. So I think that first of all improving the standard of education, uh, improving the standard of living is the most important thing for uh, the people and when you look for education as something that you want to do, um, that's the goal that you should put in front of yourself. Mm -hmm. See, how can I help other people with what I'm doing? And if we, if we look a little bit uh, at the, the first steps, um, more precisely right after university, um, so you come from Chinese politics and one could say that's not um, the most um, stringent or maybe logic thing to, <laughs> to get then into something um, educational or um, joining a startup in for-profit education and you basically um, said in, in other interviews that you had a lot of coincidence, a lot of luck during uh, your career and so offering or having offered this position, this, this job by your friend, um, what did he see in you that made him want to have you in his company or in the company he was working for? Well, I'm not sure that, <laughs> that I'm the right person to ask, but I think that, you know, I, I studied Chinese politics and uh, it is true that the connection between, uh, between what I'm doing and Chinese politics is not very strong. Even though I do think that studying the Chinese history and, and, and especially the recent history were um, actually a party at the time the Chinese Communist Party took a, as a goal to change the culture of uh, China, well, partially by education or mainly by educating mm -hmm. people, that was, I think it was a fascinating thing that drew my attention there. So. The ability to do things through education was always uh, interesting to me. Um, but, yeah, I think that uh, the fact that I went from there to education was coincidence, good luck. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, but, you know, I do believe that w whatever you do, uh, what you learned is very important. But it's as important, your talent, your knowledge, your experience, your, your way of thoughts is as important as, as the, the specific knowledge that you bring to the table, especially when you're young. And I was young, and uh, I didn't bring the experience, but I brought my mind, and I guess that that was uh, enough at the time. Mm. Um, 
And I would say um, if you're passionate about what you do and you, you really feel being at the right um, point or the right position, um, I often see that in education that actually um, people with a non-traditional educational background have the most creative ideas and the most creative startups. So um, I would agree with you on that um, perspective. So then um, the first step was um, an uh, Israeli startup um, in 1989, if I'm not mistaken, called uh, Kidum. And uh, well, you made it uh, with, your, with your fellow um, team into a very profitable startup. Um, I read numbers from taking it from uh, 100K um, per year to 25 million in annual revenue and then you sold to, to Kaplan in 2005. Um, what did you learn during this time? What um, did you take from this experience and these years and how does it affect the, the work at the University of the People today? Uh. It's, it's, it's hard question. I think that first of all, I, because I learned a lot of things from there, that was my first experience in education. And what we did there is to build an international company that uh, helped students or gave services, educational services to students in many, many aspects of education, from kids to adults, from uh, courses that were part of the of their school system to extracurricular activities so it was it was a lot of a lot of uh, different activities but i think that the main thing that that went along all the things that we did is the knowledge and that's what i got out of it is, is first that through education you can change people's life mm -hmm. but second that if you get the proper education the sky's the limit and in many cases we took we took either kids or adults that failed elsewhere and came to us, and it was clear that if you do it right, you can give them a second chance. So education is the most important tool to change your to shape your future, to change your career path, and to correct mistakes that you did in your past. And that's what I took with me, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. So it's totally different in terms of activity what we do now to what we did then. And it was for profit at the time. Now it's not for profit, but the idea is the same idea. What uh, I'm asking myself, even you took it on an international level, but um, what makes Israeli entrepreneurs so successful, uh, not only, but also in education? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think that it has to do with being Israeli. I think that, uh, I, I believe that, you know, uh, put it this way, there is a need for education in the world. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to be, to know the, uh, the arena of, uh, of education, the mm -hmm. worldwide education, and uh, I uh, basically do it, and I do it, uh, I'm based now in the U.S., and the university is a U.S. university serving students from all over the world. And I think that it's, it's a global phenomenon. I think that education, while education is very different from one country to the other, both in terms of the culture, the way people study, and the, way, the things that they study, education as a subject is a global thing. Mm -hmm. And people uh, learn everywhere and therefore I don't think that it's a country specific, I think that it's more global and I think that our success actually is because we are global mm -hmm. and I think that our further success will be if we prove that things can be global. As you told me in our little um, pre-talk for some time, um, you, you lived in Europe, precisely um, in the Netherlands. As a next career step, you were the chairman of, um, of also an e-learning company um, called 
Kit, which um, was the uh, with which partner of uh, the University of Liverpool, um, and therefore um, and the first online university outside the U.S. and where there are some things during that experience um, as University of the People is also um, a pure online university that um, you could take from being chairman over there at KIT. Yeah, I think that first of all you're right, it was the first uh, university, online university outside of the US at the time and it was a very successful company. Being successful meaning we had uh, thousands of students from all over the world. And what we learned there and what I came out, I, I sold this company in 2004. It was also for profit and they sold it, we sold it. And when we sold it, I think that the feeling was a mixed feeling. And mixed feeling because on the one hand we realized how strong and how powerful online learning is. So people can, we had students in Singapore who work during the day, mm -hmm. but still studied at night with the University of Liverpool and got the education of the Liverpool University, got a degree of the University of Liverpool without ever leaving Singapore and without changing their lives. So it was a very strong experience and very powerful experience. So this was the one part, but the other side was that it was very expensive and most of the people couldn't afford it. It was $20,000 at the time, and most people, especially outside of the U.S., where people just couldn't afford doing it. So it was a wishful thinking for them. So it was kind of a mixed feeling, and that's basically the way I left it. Wow, what a shame. We have this great tool, but most of the people cannot, cannot really use it. So that's basically the, the strongest thing I got out of this experience. Mm -hmm. And then probably, um, and we come um, to that in a moment, making the transition from uh, for-profit education into uh, a non-profit the University of the People is. So um, then um, the next career step uh, is also an interesting one. Um, Kremster, just uh, to mention it. Um, what what attracted you uh, joining uh, this company? Um, I remember uh, the interview you did with Andrew Warner on Mixergy and uh, you were just looking what was going on online and uh, this whole market and then you found them or is there another story behind it? No, that's, that's the very story but I think that what makes, makes them so appealing to me is that I it was the first time I, I, I learned about online study communities. Mm -hmm. So we're talking now about 2008, mm -hmm. about two and a half years ago, uh, where, I, where I first uh, got acquainted with the Cranster.com. And that's where I realized that there are people who are willing to help each other with their homework without getting paid. Mm -hmm something that was hard for me to believe at the beginning because why would someone help someone else if he's so good he can charge money he can be just a tutor right and tutors right. make make a lot of money so why would anyone help for uh, for free and that's what I realized that there is a new phenomena that is, is has been or had been developed uh, over the internet uh, of people sharing their information, you know, that's exactly Facebook actually, and helping each other free of charge. And I think that that's where I got basically the idea of uh, the University of the People because by then I said, wait a second, we're talking about 2008, mm -hmm. end of 2008, and by then we have open source technology I'm talking now about Moodle, where people develop software, thousands of universities actually are using it mm -hmm. as, a, as a learning platform, free of charge, so open source technology. There is a new phenomena of open educational resources where people are willing to put their, uh, their IP on the net 
their courses, their books, the material that they write for everyone to use for free. So combine all this together with the notion of people ha willing to help each other. I say to myself, if we have the technology, we have the content, and we have the people who are willing to help each other studying, or willing to teach each other, that's a university. Let's wrap it together and we can have a tuition-free university. Mm -hmm. So that's, ba that's where the idea came from. And uh, it, it basically uh, struck you like that, that you said um, exactly as the infrastructure was there, we had this um, social phenomenon that um, people were uh, coming together, uh, studying and learning from one another online, um, free, free of cost, that you then said, um, okay, I'm, I'm so convinced of this idea and that it could turn into something meaningful and big that you said um, I put a considerable amount of my own money in it and um, and we basically take it from there and uh, see it evolve. Yeah, that's exactly it. I, uh, you described it right. I saw the phenomena. I believe that uh, it can be done mm -hmm. and I also believe that it's my probably my responsibility to do it. Um, I can do it. I have the knowledge. I had the startup money to to build it, and I said and I said to myself, that's what I should do, mm -hmm. and, and that's what uh, <laughs> I have been doing in the last two years. What is the mantra? Is it really to make uh, education accessible to basically anyone, or is yeah is there another? Um, mission you are on in, in education? Well, there are millions of people around the world who graduate high school but cannot afford going to school. Mm -hmm. And they cannot afford going to school for many reasons. Many of them obviously for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. People do not have the money to study in universities and universities are expensive in most parts of the world. Right. So there is the financial reason. There are others that cannot study just because there aren't enough universities where they live. So they go graduate high school, take a placement exam, either they in or they out. They out, they no other alternative. There are other people that are excluded from, from higher education because in some cultures women, for example, are not allowed or, or tend not to go to, to universities. and. You know, there might be students with personal reasons. Personal reasons might be that they live in the village, they are good students, they get accepted to the university in the, in the city, but in order to attend the university, they have to leave this, the village and move to the city. Well, their families might not be able to lose them because they need them to stay with the family. Well, all these people have no alternative. And I do believe that these people deserve to study in a university. And the Internet enables us to do that. So we should do. And why shouldn't we? We should, and it's our duty to enable them to study. And that's the idea of the University of the People. We basically are non-profit, tuition-free, online university for students who cannot afford university. And we are here to bring democracy to education. We want to show everyone that it is possible to teach everyone with a decent education over the internet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it goes both ways. We first of all help the students, but we not only help the students, we show a model for others to imitate. Mm. So as you are on a mission to of democratizing uh, higher education, um, and it is a non-profit, however, I imagine there are costs um, purely for the university itself to run. Um, so what does tuition free mean exactly when we talk about um, financing studies? Is there more something like um, if I'm a student from a more developed country, let's say I pay a little more? To, to compensate or basically to allow somebody else with no money at all um, to also study? So is there something like a shared, shared effort? Well, uh, we are tuition free, but we are not free. Mm -hmm. So 
students, right now we are free and we are totally free, but in the future students will pay for admission, but also every time they take a test. So they take a course, but they, by the end of the course, if they want to take the exam, they will pay examination processing. Mm -hmm. Examination processing fee will vary from 10 to $100, depending on the country that the students come from. So students from a poor country will pay $10 every time um, he or she takes the exam. Mm -hmm. Students from a more wealthy country will pay up to $100 every time they take the exam. This amount will make us sustainable because we are tuition free, we are non-profit, but it is our aim to be sustainable because I do believe that non-profit should sustain itself and this small amount that we charge the students uh, will make us sustainable um, when, we, when we have enough students. And uh, you uh, referred um, a little bit when we talked about uh, Kremster to, to this actually learning with your peer uh, system or methodology, if you, if you will. Um, let's say, um, does it particularly pay off in computer science and business administration as these are the first two uh, undergraduate programs of the University of the People? Um, or was it um, more like you took the decision for peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, learning and then combining or, or looking at all the different subjects one um, is, is able to study and then took um, two potential potentially very important subjects for for the pu for the future of, of students all over the world we chose a um, business administration and computer science for two reasons the first reason is because these programs are the most likely to help the students to find job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember that we're dealing with students who have no other alternative. Mm -hmm. We're going to students who are poor, students who cannot afford going to university, and we want to help them, first of all, to find a job, to help them improve their standard of living, to elevate their social status. So this is the first, the first reason. And these two programs are the more likely, the most likely to help them doing that, yeah. because they're in high demand. The second reason is as important for us, because business administration and computer science are the two programs that are culturally independent, mm -hmm. meaning you studied computer science or business administration, well, either whether you studied it in uh, the U.S., in mm -hmm. France, China, in Saudi Arabia, in Ghana, no matter where you study, you study the same program. Now, this is very important because we want to put students from many countries in each classroom. Every time a student takes a class, he's put together with students, with about 20 students from about 20 countries. Now, this is very important because, oh, because them talking to each other, studying with each other, having peer-to-peer -peer learning is opening their minds to other cultures. We want our students to see that the people who sit next to them virtually next to them, in the classroom, which might be their enemies. They might be, you know, student from India and a student from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. When they sit together, they realize that their enemies are not really enemies. They are very similar to them. And it's for us opening, broadening their mind, opening their minds to other people and exposing them to other cultures, we believe, will open them to other cultures will make peace in the world closer. Mm -hmm. And this is as important as what they study. So it's very important for us, and business administration and computer science are, are one of the very few programs that enable us to do that. That's very, no, 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 that's, that's actually very interesting. Um, when will we see the first uh, graduates from the University of the People? Well, students who study um, the, the first student started in September 2009, Nine. Mm -hmm. over a year ago. 
By now, by the way, we have accepted 800 students from 110 countries. Uh, for these 800 students, we have over 2,000 volunteering professors who, who, help, who volunteer to help them. So we're a good university, three professors for every student. Oh, that's, know, uh, that's luxury. <laughs> University with such a ratio, yeah, but we, we get we get a lot of we got a lot of support. But to answer your question, those who started in September two thousand nine, it will take them four years or more to yeah. graduate. So it will take us. So it'll a take hit. still a, a little moment, but uh, yeah, that will be exciting um, to see. Um, we are looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you um, one question about the material side, as there's basically a lot going on in the in the textbook market, uh, check, book renter, but then also um, something, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, more disruptive, um, like flat, flat word knowledge. Um, so basically, this transition process or the whole discussion um, of still having traditional textbooks um, but then ha now having, well, advancing very quickly in the technology itself, then probably going more and more towards digital study materials um, for the University of the People how do you see, is there a transition as well, and how do you see it develop? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting question, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's the core of what's going on right now in, in this world. Um, because we're tuition free, mm -hmm. we're trying to rely on open educational resources as yeah. much as we can. Not only because we cannot afford buying books, and we save a lot of money, but more so because of our students. We cannot send our students to buy textbook. Yep. They don't have the money. So we need to find an alternative. But I think that this world is, is, is in a process of, of changing. And it's similar to other worlds that, that, that the Internet has been changed. It's not clear how it is going to develop. I believe that OER is going to be an important... Uh, part of, of the of the future but there will be a few a few a uh, paradigm that will be developed some people will still buy buy and use textbook mm -hmm. other will use only open educational resources but then there, there will be alternatives in between like flat world knowledge uh, there are now talks about uh, people being able to download like YouTube and pay for chapters of things that they want to use, yep. so there will be a, a lot of a, a lot of a new paradigm being uh, developed. I'm certain that the old world of a textbook is not as as it exists will not be there for long. It will totally transform to new things, and everyone is now trying to build their own way and and, and try other things. Yeah, uh, it probably we have to figure out uh, and, and to try a couple of things and then, um, well, the market regulates and, um, and all the different um, things that are going on at the same time and um, I am sure that very soon we will see more clearly in, in what direction it, uh, it heads, but uh, I am sure that it will not be the, tr the traditional textbook as it's yeah. still. Um, I agree used today. So then um, I clearly see a lot of enthusiasm just seeing this incre incredible opportunities on the student side. Also many educators I know online they just want to give back to people that are not as fortunate as um, they may have been themselves. Um, seeing a little bit um, the site of uh, for-profit, also uh, other higher education, the system itself. How was the acceptance um, of the university, of the people, when you first um, li like really established it and uh, it was running? What was the feedback you okay. got? I think that if I was surprised, that's where I was surprised, because, you know, obviously it's a good idea and it helps people so 
it was clear to me even before I announced the university that the reaction will be positive. Mm -hmm. But I had no clue how strong the support will be. We announced the university. From the day we announced the university, we have been flooded by volunteers. Um, as I said, we have over 2,000 volunteering professors who are willing to help our students. We are research partner with Yale Law School. Mm -hmm. We are backed by the UN. We were invited to take part in the Clinton Global Initiative, in the World Economic Forum, just, you know, everywhere. Our top academic leadership are coming from Harvard, Yale, NYU, Columbia, you know, INSEAD, just mention it, all the best places. So we are extremely, we have got a very, very positive reaction and extremely, a lot, and a lot of support. I think that, you know, probably quite a few people stand out there and say, Let's see that it works. Let's see how it works because it, it's very, it's very different. It's very different than anything that have been there. But a lot, a lot of people <laughs> help us and make sure that uh, that it is uh, successful. And I think that it is important because I think that you know what we're doing out there. We're helping students. We're helping them, and but but not only them because when we help them, we help them. We help their families. We help their. Uh, their communities, um, and we have their countries, and we have the world. And yep. we have, when we help the world, we make peace closer because, as I said before, um, our students are the best to be open to world peace. I think that on the side note, I think that what we're doing, we also helping universities to look at what we're doing and say, hey, wait a second. If they succeed and if they are sustainable, instead of teaching like the universities do, 20,000 students, 30,000 students, maybe 50,000 students, looking at what we do, they can come to themselves and say, hey, we can add a zero to our numbers. Instead of 10,000, we can have 100,000. Instead of 30,000, we can have 300,000 students. So we're building a model for others to see what we're doing and to imitate us. But this is even more important for governments. Mm -hmm. Look at developing countries' governments. They're right now spending the few millions that they have to build their own Harvard, their own Sorbonne, their own um, Oxford. But, you know, they would not be able to build their own Sorbonne because it costs more than, than, than a few millions to build this, this kind of institution. And they can look at what we, we're doing and say, wait a second, we can spend this money and educate all of our people. All of the country can have a decent education. So they would look at us and say, well, hopefully they will come to us and say, are you willing to do it for us? Or are you willing to help us do it? And obviously, we are willing to help them, we're willing to do it for them. And we even be happy if they just look at what we do and do it by themselves without, without using us. But what we're doing, actually, and if it will happen, we will have a great effect on the world, and hopefully, as I said, we'll ma we'll way we will help make world peace close. This is truly uh, fascinating. Um, so, of course, um, it's not limited to, to education, but as you said, um, world peace and uh, it spreads in, into societies and, and has to, to grow in there and, and have in its effect. What is your wish, going back to the educational side, um, what is your wish for higher education in the coming years? I think I've just said it. I think that I believe that education should be for everyone. And I think that there is education is a right. And it's a right that everyone can have and no matter where he live and no matter from what income he's coming from. So I believe that education is going to be available for everyone. And there are going to be a lot of shapes of education, a lot of forms of education. So there will be the best universities for the people who can get in and can afford it. 
there will be other institutions which will, which will give great education. And there are, you know, there will be many forms. There will be traditional universities, there will be online universities, there will be hybrid universities that will be half online and half and half a traditional way. Sorry. So there will be another shapes and another and other kinds of education and people all over the world can get it. And I believe that with the use of the internet, everyone eventually will will get it. Will have That's access to education. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's um, that's a great um, wish and uh, and vision for the future, and hopefully um, it'll come in in recent years. As you are so woven into education and uh, to some extent uh, shaped it um, also and um, and yeah led it in uh, in a certain direction. Um, Coming to the last question for yourself, if you hadn't started something in education, even by coincidence, what do you imagine you would have become otherwise? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, if you had asked me when I studied Chinese, what would you do in five years? <laughs> I had no clue at the time. And, you know, if you ask me now, what will I do in 10 years? So right now, the answer is that no doubt I will still be with the University of the People because we want to change the world. But will it be so? I don't know. So I don't have a good answer for you. I don't know. But we say um, that uh, we can state that uh, you clearly see that you are at the right place, at the right time, and that's your vision um, and your path for the future, um, probably because um, you, are, you are all in and you're passionate about what you do. So it's exactly the right thing and what you want to do. Well, I think that I'm, I don't know if I'm, if I'm the right person, that's someone else to judge, but I'm, I'm at the right place and I will be there as long as I feel that uh, I can make a difference. So yeah, the answer is yeah. yeah. That's a very nice closing statement. So thanks, Shai, uh, very much. Um, that was um, a big pleasure and fun having you and, and hearing your, your vision and ideas and um, how everything is developing with the University of the People. Last question, people who want to know more about the University of the People, where should they go to? So I imagine you are all over the social media um, as well. And um, how can people get more information? May it be um, from the educator or the student site? Sure. First of all, uh, our website is people. Dot o -R -G, mm -hmm. U for University of the People, UOPeople.org, mm -hmm. and obviously people can go also to Facebook and see we have over, over 100,000 fans on Facebook, a University of the People a fan page, a, so people are more than welcome to come and see, and uh, they can ask all the questions that they have there, so yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Shai, so much. And um, I wish you all the best um, for the future, for your own future, and uh, the University of the People, of course. And um, thanks for talking today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank thanks. you. Thanks.